Oh, this is Tim with Tadai Farm. We're going to start a little series today on making some repairs to the John Deere 6600 Combine. It's a 1974. But uh, the rear steering, I don't know if you can see this, but it's loose. So we're going to change center pivot out there. Got, I got new bushings and bearings there. No, I guess not bearings, it's bushings. Got new bushings for there. You can kind of see how that's offset right there. Way off the edge here. So we got that to replace. And then I got new tie rod ends for the steering and all that. So that's what we're going to work on today. So stay tuned. All right. Now we got that blocked and it's setting. You can really see how bad that is now. All right. First thing we got to do is get these wheel weights off so we can get to the lugs. It's going to be the same thing on the other side as this side, so we're just going to do one side and show you, but I'll show you on the inside there's weights too, but we'll get to those in a second. But. I don't remember what they weigh, but I know they're heavy. Alright, I didn't show that, but that was a big struggle. Sorry, I didn't want you to see how weak I was. Anyway, we've got two smaller weights on this side here. We'll get them pulled off. All right, we got the weights off, the wheel off here. This is the other side. We're going to talk on this side a little bit because we got the steering hydraulic cylinder here for steering. So we're going to get this off. I've already taken the cotter pins out. So the cotter pins are out. We're going to, I got the uh, impact. We're going to try to drive this one out and this one. I got the bolts loose, but they're still on there just to protect the threads. So that's where we're at right now. That right there makes light work of getting them driven out of there. They're uh, kind of at an edge or an angle. So it just pulls them down in tight. That's how those work. But you can see how bad that one is. And that one's really bad too. So we're going to take this off and that should drop this down out of there now. And we got this out of the way. Well, that's what I call coming out easy. We're gonna go back over the other swell. Let me pull you down here. We need to get this off here now. Two bolts here nuts and then this all comes off and i can get this driven out of there and then that end changes on that too so hang tight all right that one just threads out we threaded the new one in that one's done this one crawl oil i like it works good for me we're gonna put a little of that on there let that soak so we can get that loose so we'll work on that later. Now, maybe we'll get this off, take a device. Might be easier. Pop this out here. Get that off, then we'll see what we gotta do. There we go. There we go. Let's go take this to the bench, see if we can't get that apart. Then we'll drive these out of there. We might take this to the bench too, because we got to pull it apart right there. All right, I got that out. I don't ever anticipate on having to get these out again, but just in case, We're using anises. And we're gonna to try to match these up the best we can. Let's 
it's pretty close right there let me go get a bolt out it's a little bit long calls for an inch and three quarters and all I had was inch and a half and two inch so that's what we'll use there that baby's tight Now we got to get this other end out. And that could be challenging. Anyhow, that's the goal. We're going to get this split open. See if we can get this to loosen up. We'll be back. I shut the camera off a little quick there. It came right off. <coughs> so... We'll get this all lubed up real good. There you go. That's done. Now, because John Deere don't believe in painting any of their parts anymore today, we're going to get the John Deere paint out and we'll paint this. So I'll have to get that cleaned up, but that, we're gonna do that real quick while that other stuff's soaking. We'll be back. Now here's my paint booth. The old tires off the 1086 duels. But yeah, for whatever reason, John Deere don't wanna waste paint. Still charge an arm and leg for the part. We'll get back into this here and get going on that. Well, let me figure out how this comes off and we'll get back with you. All right, the trick to getting that off was just taking that thing, tipping it way up and down real fast, up and down and jerking at the same time. And I also greased it real good several times as doing it and it slid right off for me. So got that off. We got these cleaned up. They all look pretty good. There is a slight, just a slight little gouge here bigger on the bottom but the top's nice and smooth so I think we'll be all right there and neighbor guy came over help me get this over here that thing is heavy so we got this over here and I'm working on getting these out right now then we'll pull these out so just kind of hang here and watch I'm going to use this I got this one out already just kind of slices it right up There you go. Hopefully you can see. That's all it is to it. We'll get them all cleaned out. Got them clean. There's some gouging. That was from previous. And I worked them down a little bit because there was a little ridge right in there. But um, yeah, I cleaned them up a little bit. But that was somebody else peeled them out of there. But uh, put new grease certs on both ends. This one I'm leaving the way it is because it's kind of a different kind of zert than what I got and I'm not gonna mess with it. But it works really good, so it's good. But that's gonna end day one. We'll get back to this. The bushings are in the freezer. Little trick that a uh, machinist told me. So um, tomorrow we'll see if we can't get these uh, bushings pressed in here and uh, we'll get that done there is something I do have to purchase all right back over here to the combine this spindle the other side's got a little roller bearing between these two washers and this side doesn't so I need to see about getting this right here see if it's available from John Deere but uh, we're ready to start putting things back together and that'll be for day two but We'll tack it onto this video. It's all going to be one video on replacing this. So stay tuned. Tomorrow I'll be here in a second. All right, we're going to get back at this. It's four days later. Not that putting it in the freezer for four days makes it any better work schedule. So 
anyway we're gonna get these and drive them in so hang on we got this we're gonna drive it down in there there's a slit in them and they said put that away from the uh, pressure point so on the, this is the bottom upside down right now so the pressure is gonna be that way so we're gonna drive it in that way There we go. Couple more to do and we're done. All right. I didn't get video bringing this back over here and putting it on, but my son helped me. We got it over here and it slid right on and much tighter. Doesn't wiggle near as much before. So we're gonna bolt this back together here. That's kind of what that looks like. Just these bolts hold that bracket in there. So let's start putting our ends on. See how we go there. All right, greased everything up. Hopefully that helps things slide in better. Well, you've all seen putting lug nuts on. No reason to bore you. We'll be back in a little bit. Got pretty much everything together here. We're putting the weights on. And by no means is this the right way, wrong way, or any way to do these weights. But it's what I found to work. So hang on. Watch how this works. And don't laugh. All right, a few things to tidy up on it. Um, I need to check the alignment. Uh, and that, I, I need to get this wheel straight here. Uh, it's turned in just a little bit, and it could just be the way it was messed up on there. I know I measured that and got it the same length on this right here. So I know that's good. It's just an adjustment with the steering wheel. Get that part straight, and then measure. You're just measuring from this edge to the other edge, front and back. Got to look at the book. I think it's an eighth inch shorter in the front than the back. I, I'll have to look at the book. But uh, anyway, it's done. A few things to tighten up, clean up. But overall, not a bad project. Um, I probably could have done it in eight hours if I had all the parts and got started on it earlier in the day that day I started this video. But I tell you what, a couple tricks to doing this getting that center pivot off the key there was get it greased good get it moving and then as you're moving pull back on it and get that thing twisting back and forth real fast pulling back and it, it it slid off it probably took me 10 minutes i was wore out when i was done with it but that's a trick there and then getting the bushings back in put them in the freezer that's the first time i've done that and i tell you what those things slid on pretty good uh, another trick somebody taught me so but anyway some of you may have asked why so much weight um i run a, a, a six row corn head 643 corn head and uh, it's 30 inch rows six uh six row wide and um the book calls for outside weights the inside weights and then right down under here t weights six of them on there that's what it calls for now running the 216 bean head it just calls for the uh rear weights doesn't doesn't say you need the uh t weights but i don't take them on and off that's too much trouble but that's just so you don't nose forward when you slow down stop um anyways we in this one if there's anything else you'd like to see let me know Last year we did the tires. Uh, I did a lot of belt changing on getting it ready for the fall. Showed some stuff about what you change from 
beans to corn, some engine repairs. Done a bunch of those videos. We got some other stuff we're going to do here, but if there's some things you'd like to see, let me know. If I've done it, I'll tell you, give you a link to it. And if we haven't, maybe we'll try to do it. So, hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.